Over this past summer, Chris from the photo department, which I'm sure you've heard of and watched before, gave me a roll of Reflex Labs 500T, which they had sent him to test shoot. Well, fast forward to about a month ago when I was reminded of the whole controversy of cinema film, respooled film, and Cinestill, and I was reminded of the crisp photos that Chris had taken in his studio of this nice 500T cinema film from Reflex Labs. He was boasting how great the colors were and just how cool the little sprockets on medium format is, which both of those I cannot disagree with. While I was out in West Arizona and Utah for a gig, I took some time out to visit Sedona and test shoot this roll, which I was extremely pleased with, especially once I got home and saw it was only $9 for a roll of medium format, which I think is very affordable. So come with me up to the red face mountains of Sedona, Arizona, as I fumble my way through this beautiful cinema film. up a roll of Portra 400 in here. I'm going to quick load the reflex cinema film into the camera. I think I'll shoot one or two photos quick because the sun is quickly dissipating, uh, but then in the morning I'm going to get up early for a sunrise. The sun will be coming up behind the camera, uh, throwing light onto the mountain range there, which I think will be a lot better than sunset where it was uh, kind of in my face and in the camera's face. So uh, let's see what we can get and uh, we'll go from there. So I only ended up shooting one shot just because of how quickly the sun was setting and I wanted to make sure I had enough exposures for a variety of different ones. I pretty much called it a night, made some Cheeto mac and cheese, which by the way, if you're ever considering picking some of this up, just don't. It's awful. And then just called it a night. That night was honestly freezing cold, especially since I don't have a diesel heater in the Forerunner. But waking up to the cotton candy backdrop of these Sedona Red Rock Mountains was tough to complain about. The next morning I only took three or four photos and then some of them ended up actually having some strange scratches on them which we'll talk more about at the end of the video. From there I drove to Jerome, Arizona, an old abandoned town turned tourist trap and spent the night stealth camping up there. The next morning I walked around and spotted one of my favorite vehicles ever, an FJ40, parked beautifully on a hill, donning some nice morning light. After that, I headed back to Sedona to finish the roll when I came across the only blue arched McDonald's in the world, which is pretty cool. From there, I actually was done with the entire roll. Ten photos can go quite quick. Well, sort of. There were some other images that I took that had these large scratching marks, which Chris, who had developed and scanned the film, had attributed this to being one of Reflex Lab's first 500T test rolls. Once I saw how clean his scans were too, I'm now pretty confident that's what happened. Unless I somehow had scratched or bent the film when I had first gotten it or once I'd finished shooting it. Honestly, I'm not too sure. 
Overall, my thoughts on the film are really great outside the obvious test roll stuff. The first couple shots up at the top of Schneedley Hill Vista in Sedona were some incredibly tough dynamic shots. Honestly, I think some of the most difficult shots to both meter for, but also for the film to shoot. With the super punchy, vibrantly bright highlights of the mountaintops and the deep dark, sun-deprived shadows, trying to balance out both to retain enough detail and minimize any color shifting can be quite tough. That being said, I think the colors, minimal grain, and dynamic range can really all be on display on these. As for the FJ40 and the McDonald's shot, the lighting is much more straightforward and less intense, so to me, the colors and grain structure really shine here. To me, in these images, you can really see some of the similarities to Kodak's other professional color negative film, and I'm just genuinely impressed as a whole. They're also super sharp, which I know can be attributed to Mamiya and the Mamiya glass, but there is something to be said about the film stock as well. Especially as someone who's never shot cinema film before, after seeing Chris's shots, I was pretty stoked, but it was honestly apprehensive I would get similar shots. I even looked on Reddit to see how the film was looking from other people who had shot it, and again, I'm just thoroughly impressed at what this film is capable of doing, especially at this price point. I'm really excited for the future of Reflex Labs, as it seems once they get down their quality control, which I'm sure has made huge leaps since this test roll, they'll be offering a really great film stock at any affordable price. I also like how they straight up tell you in the description that it's re-spooled cinema film and specifically what cinema film, not trying to don it like it's some new chemistry from Reflex Lab, but rather leaning into that it is this historic legacy. Kodak film. Alright, so what are my overall thoughts on it? It has good color renderings, good saturation, uh, good grain structure, it has good dynamic range as we've seen in the landscapes, and it's at an incredible price point which I think especially for medium format uh, cannot be understated. Which, speaking of which, I'll link down below Reflex Labs website so you can check out not only 500T but their whole uh, film stock lineup as well. They just sent me over a handful of their new Pro 100 220 rolls and I think Chris and I from the photo department are going to head out in a couple days and test those out. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I want to know if you guys have ever shot cinema film before. What was your experience with it? I'm always curious to know what you guys think and if you guys have any other recommendations for other cinema film to shoot. Otherwise, let me know what you guys thought of the photos down below. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that'll wrap it up for this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next video, stay safe, stay shooting. Peace out, guys.